Hello everyone, we're here from our beautiful headquarters location in North Miami Beach and we're going to be talking a bit about the scientific nature of self-defense. My brother's Pedro and Joaquim. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. So Pedro, we learned Jiu-Jitsu from Mario Gracie and learning Jiu-Jitsu from Mario Gracie was both very technical, but in many ways, even though Grandmaster Eddie was not an academic, he was very scientific. Yes, in his approach. And he studied the science behind self-defense. Because self-defense is a product of our brain. And so we need to understand how our, brain, how our brain operates under pressure. So it's important to study neuroplasticity, how we can affect the brain through training. It's important to study the different parts of the brain responsible for different reactions and also how we can automatically react when attacked in a critical, in a life-threatening situation. I agree 100%. And I think that that understanding only comes through the study and applying that study to the practice, to the way that we teach, to our methodology. And this is what we have always tried to apply directly to the way that we teach Jiu-Jitsu, the art of self-defense at our schools. So let's talk about some techniques and understand the difference between instincts and also learned behaviors. You know, one of the quickest instincts that we have is called a startle effect. And Grandmaster Elio used to say that he would like for his response to be connected with that startle effect. We understand that the startle effect comes from our brainstem. The amygdala, on the other hand, it is responsible for learned behavior that also comes as an automatic response, as a conditioned reflex. But he wanted the response to be so fast that it will be connected to, a, to the startle effect. For example, when you throw a punch, it's a natural response for my arms to come up. That's the startle effect. But you see that our block is connected to that startle effect, but with more technique that is learned and that allows us to have a rational and efficient, well, how to use a skeletal structure to, in this case, is an owner block, this bone on the edge of the forearm that maximizes our ability. Instead of to using stop your that hands, blow. for example, or your fingers, right? So let's talk a little bit about techniques, again, that have that startle effect, but that require a step. Correct. For example, the push to the chest. Yes, because in this case, the step is produced by a push. It's a, it's a reaction that I have to avoid falling down, right? Because if it's a visual reaction, I'm not going to let you push me, right? Put the hand on my... If I see it, I'm not going to let you. So if I'm surprised and... Maybe you, you're looking in a different direction. Correct. And you and suddenly, push me, I'm going to... The step is going to be an automatic reaction. So I could possibly, through training, condition my reflex so that when I'm pushed, I always step back with my right leg. But if you suddenly push me with the left, I'm still gonna step with the right leg. Because I won't be able, there won't be time to identify if it's right or left, unless we would I see like, it before. We would like to have this ability, yes. but we just don't. There might be an ideal way, but we have to recognize the limitations of the brain and our ability to react, especially under the stress, the adrenaline response, the fight or flight that takes away our ability to use the, the frontal lobe, the, the prefrontal cortex of our brain, which is responsible for a cognitive response. Let's do it one time, so exactly. So as you can observe from this position, Joaquin's shoulders are not turning, right? Now, Joaquin, keep this position, but just change. See, it still doesn't change. And Nothing this is what changed. Grandmaster Edu taught. Yes. Why? Because he understood that some students would step with the right, some students would step with the left. Yes, there's even in, in sometimes when they want to know if the person is left or right, which side is dominant. There's a test that they do, usually turn you around and feet together and you push me and, and the automatic response is done with your dominant leg. It's important for us to remember that when, we, when you're talking about wrist locks, this move only works if you go to snap the Correct. person's wrist. Correct. This is not a position for you to hold, negotiate, negotiate. So it's a very quick move, and a couple of times when we were demonstrating, you saw us do this and stay here, but in a real life situation, you're going for the break. The process of fight or flight, where your body focuses all its energy into the zones of your body that are responsible for survival and not into the cognitive, cognitive thought. We could keep going much more, talking much more about this, but I think it's enough and we'd like to invite everyone to come to a class and experience our method and our techniques. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.